Good morning, you guys. We have arrived. We're down in Te Torrance, California again. I said it was coming. Uh, we're down at the Robinson factory right now. We're about to go inside, uh, start our classroom session. I think today they're going to give us the factory tour. I don't know if they're going to let me uh, film the, the tour or not, but if they do, I'm definitely taking you guys along for the ride. I think those are the other people that are going to be with us in the class. We've got a whole group of people. we got seven of us all together. Up, <laughs> Say good morning, guys. Good morning. we got the crew here. <laughs> what? <Hello. laughs> All right, let's get in there and see what they're going to teach us here. It's going to be a fun week. All right, guys, that was an amazing tour, wasn't it? No, I'm just kidding. It was an amazing tour, but I, uh, I begged and pleaded, and they said, no, there's no way that you're allowed to take video in there. At first, I didn't really understand why. I thought maybe it was for privacy reasons, uh, for the company, uh, for just for their technology and stuff like that. Found out later, it's actually privacy for the employees that work there, um, just because we can't get permission from everybody to to have them on the video. So that makes complete sense. I totally understand that, but it is definitely a bummer uh, because it would have been really amazing to show you guys around. So I'm just gonna give you a little description of what the last four days have been like. I'm at the airport here, uh, waiting to get on my plane, uh, head back to Abbotsford. And uh, so I just wanna take a few minutes to kind of walk you guys through the course. Um, if I was gonna be 100% um, truthful and honest about the course, it was, it was a mix. Um, it started really, really amazing, kind of went downhill a little bit, and then it ended off on a really strong note. So I mean, what I mean by that, it's interesting when you take courses like this, I've been to a, a couple different ones, and um, when you get taught by somebody who has a really, really depth of knowledge, and is very honest, and um, has, if you, if you have lots of questions and stuff like that, they've got really good truthful answers for you of all those questions, um, that's amazing. So um, it started off with the first presenter being really, really knowledgeable, um, a lot of depth in accidents that have happened, why they happened, how they happened. You know, we had lots of questions for them. Uh, they were able to answer them all um, with really good answers. And you could tell that they weren't really trying to beat around the bush and, and hide things. They were really trying to give you truthful information uh, because they really do um, care and they're really concerned about safety. Uh, they want to make sure that they can make the safest pilots possible to fly their helicopters. So every helicopter has some inherent um, you know, gremlins and things like that. Uh, but they want to make sure that uh, that you're aware of all the things of their helicopters and you can fly them as safely as possible. So I, I really appreciated that. Second day was really good. Um, not quite as strong as the, the first day. The third day was, was weak. Um, we just felt like the presentation definitely could have been stronger. Um, we had lots of questions that were not really well answered. Um, that was kind of when we were getting into more of the technical stuff of the, the POH, the Pilot Operating Handbook. Um, and about the pre-flight of the aircraft and things like that. Things that we just had questions on um, that's always nice to get answers from the manufacturer's point of view. We weren't really able to get those answers. So that was, that was unfortunate, um, but there was definitely some good, good parts of that. Um, that was Wednesday. That was actually the day that we all flew, and, and that was really fantastic. Um, really great pilots there. Um, I, I got to fly with one of the Robinson uh, test pilots, which was cool. But there was a, kind of a variety of pilots um, that everybody got to fly with. It was very interesting, though, you would think that everything that they do there, all their training and stuff like that should be extremely standardized. When you look at the, the company, I'll talk about the tour in a second, um, it's a very structured company, lots of procedures, lots of policies. Um, so you would think that when you're doing the training flights, they would all be pretty much identical, maybe not exactly in the same order, but all the exercises completed um, in exactly the same way, and you do all these same exercises when you're flying. Um, out of seven, us, seven of us that were in the course, um, it was interesting, it was almost like there was seven different flights. Um, and it was, yeah, I mean, I, I did some things that the others didn't do, they did some things I didn't do, and, um, and some of the exercises were done slightly differently. Um, nothing dramatic, but just uh, just some small differences that we were like, hmm, that's interesting that uh, some of the test pilots are doing that and some of them are not. So that was intriguing. Um, but I thought it was done really well. My, my pilot was really good, um, good at explaining what he wanted. Uh, we were able to do uh, sort of all the different emergency exercises, and I thought it was, it was well done. So that was nice. Um, that day, day ended up good for me um, from, from a flight point of view. Um, then the last day was fantastic. Uh, we had Tim Tucker there teaching the last part and um, he he's an amazing guy he's legendary he's been around Robinson for many 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 years chief flight instructor there uh, he's the guy that creates those Geronimo apps uh, for weight and balance and everything and uh, so it was really awesome he um, he finished off on a really strong note he was talking about tail rotors and the safety of them 
uh, auto rotations and uh, just kind of going over a summary of everything. So that was really, really good. Um, on day two, Monday, Tuesday, yeah. So on day two um, in the afternoon, we got to go on the factory tour. That's what I was hoping to take you guys on. And um, it's, it's definitely impressive. Um, they have two massive facilities, massive buildings right next to each other. And um, one is the more of the manufacturing and one is more production. And so they go through, uh, they do 80% in-house production of these helicopters. That is phenomenal. That's the highest that I know of anyways in the world of helicopter production in-house. Um, a lot of the time, most of the things, a large portion of them are, uh, are done by different vendors and then they just gather all the parts and as assemble the helicopters. Um, I know for the gimbal helicopter, that's the case. They, they do definitely manufacture certain things in-house, uh, the gearboxes and the, um, the blades and so forth. There's a few things that are done in-house, um, but a large portion of it is done by different vendors and then they just bring it uh, to the facility and then assemble it there. So, uh, very unique, incredible to see the, the, the magnitude of the facility, how clean it was, it was impeccably clean. You could, you could eat off the floors. Um, everybody had their specific tasks. Amazing machinery, really like a modern, uh, modern facility. Um, incredible technology and stuff that they have in there. Um, so that was really neat to see. And then the production line, they're down on production right now. Um, they said they're producing about two helicopters a week right now, which is quite dramatically down. I believe in its sort of um, pre, pre, like sort of prime production, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but I believe it's more like 10. Um, helicopters per week so it's uh, fairly substantially down right now um, just a worldwide market is doesn't have as big of a demand um, and then yeah so they showed us uh, the the full production right to the finished product test flying bay uh, the delivery bay of where the helicopters are prepped and um, kind of polished and finished up for customers to come and pick up and stuff so um, it was a very amazing um, when, I, when I was at the gimbal factory, I was very impressed with it, with their facility and their production and everything. Really small, um, but really professional, really great team. Really like that. Um, and just incredibly um, impressed with the quality and the workmanship and so forth. Um, but this was impressive on a different level just because of the magnitude and the scale um, at which they're producing these helicopters. <laughs> it's really amazing. Um, it's always fun to see the helicopters. I uh, just go from you know a bare piece of metal to a final product where it's actually a flying helicopter ready to go. So very neat to see that. Uh, neat to see the stands of all the RR300s, the Rolls Royce uh, 300 engines sitting there, the Lycoming engine sitting there, uh, just ready to go into the helicopters. Um, really quite awesome. And they have a huge, huge portion of their business is overhauls. Uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, we have our helicopter there for overhaul right now. That one's still being stripped down, um, taken apart so that it can uh, start reproduction, I guess, um, or re-manufacturing. Um, so that was, uh, that was really neat. And um, yeah, so a large portion of their, their bay, their, their area there is in the disassembly. And then uh, basically it goes straight into the production line and goes through the production line, just like all the rest of their helicopters. So that was one of the, the deciding factors for me. Um, of bringing it down there versus just taking it to a local um, overhaul shop that can do the 2200 hour overhauls. When you send it to Robinson, you really see, like they take that thing down to every last rivet. Um, it is stripped 100% and you basically get a brand new helicopter back. They, they tell you that you won't be able to see the difference between a brand new helicopter and uh, one that's come from the, the overhaul. And I believe that's true because we saw some that were there that were fresh out of overhaul right next to some brand new helicopters and I was looking around them and really you couldn't tell. And it was amazing because I didn't fly in it but uh, some of the other guys flew in serial number four. It was an Astro original model uh, Robinson 44 that uh, was upgraded to a uh, Raven 1 and it was fresh out of overhaul. It's serial number four, you guys. This is from back in the, I believe it was the early 90s when they uh, first were doing the R44s and you couldn't tell that it was, uh, that it, was <laughs> it was an old helicopter. It looked like a brand new helicopter. So definitely neat to see that. Um, so overall, my, um, my thoughts taking away from it they do an amazing course. I think it's well worth it. They make it incredibly cheap. I believe it's like $900 or something, which gives you four days of classroom, um, including a one hour flight in a helicopter. I mean, you can't even fathom um, how low that price is. It's really, really hard to beat that. So 
if any of you guys are flying Robinsons or planning to fly Robinsons of any model, R22, R44, R66, I personally would highly recommend uh, going to take the Robinson safety course. I think it was well worth it. Um, you're going to get a lot out of it. You're always, doesn't matter how many hours you have, how long you've been flying, you're always going to get a lot out of a course like this. That's, that's the way I look at it. Um, so I think it was beneficial for me. I really enjoyed it. I can't believe it's taken me this long to get down to the factory and to actually do it. But I'm glad I did. I think it was well worth it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this little rant. Um, sorry there wasn't more visuals of the helicopters and the, the factory and stuff like that. They just didn't want me to take anything. So um, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And we'll talk to you in the next one. See you guys.